This would be the game this week. Back and forth, ebbs and flows, ups and downs, craziness, definitely storylines. This is the smoke them if you got them award, though, because it all goes back to Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew delivered when it mattered. Gardner Minshew getting the ball down the field, especially in overtime when they were down. He finds Alec Pierce for the long pass that sets up the game winner, that neat little kind of fake pick play where Michael Pittman Jr. cuts to the inside yeah, instead right. of trying to switch going it through off, the pick. Right? There's yeah. the long pass to Alec Pierce that sets it up. Hand gets caught in the face Get mask at the end. And again, this is the got to have it drive. You're down three in overtime, and that's where Michael Pittman makes that cut to the inside. And They're trying to switch it off. Yeah. This is where Shane Steichen's special, Mike, because like, he knew, he knew the like rules. Pittman was going to go out. Right. They're, so they're getting ready to trade him off, and he says, oh, okie doke. So you trade him off. You go, wait, well, okay, I got the first guy inside. You got the first guy outside. Wait, what if both guys go inside, right? That's kind of how you beat it there, and that was a great play, and he just shown Shane Steichen's you know, ability to dial it up in big moments. Well, We've been talking about D'Amico Ryan's coach of the year. Shane Steichen's in the conversation now as well because he has taken a Colts team that was just mired in dysfunction. And, look, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, Jim Irsay had that Twitter thing, and he had the comment on the HBO Real Sports with Brian Gumbel, and the team just ignores that. I think the Colts organization for so long has figured out how to handle their business notwithstanding whatever periodic distractions might be be created from the top of the organization that they just take all this in stride it's not going to slow them down they've now won four in a row and Gardner Minshew Chris he is earning a starting job next year somewhere and not just the oh he's our starter until we draft someone he's earning an opportunity to go somewhere and be the guy that a team gets behind that a team believes in that a team invests in we've seen it enough and oh with the Jaguars he had that he had the two years, yeah. but the team stunk yes, around right. him. Sure, right. They stunk. Yeah. So you get him in a spot where the team around him doesn't stink, That's and right. he's learning, and he's growing, and he's improving, and the way he can galvanize a team and make it fun. If you can make this business of football fun for the players, that's a little thing that is an extra feather in your cap and makes you better and makes you more competitive. I've always been a believer in Gardner Minshew. We loved him when we met with him oh, at the yeah. Super Bowl after his rookie year. Right. I just feel like these teams need to accept the fact that, yeah, he's not your stereotypical quarterback. Yeah. But maybe that's what makes him great. Uh, maybe it's part of what makes around him great. Him, sure. Yeah, there's an edge about him. There's something that guys go like, hey, I like this. He's got some pizzazz. He believes in himself. He brings energy to our football team, right? You know, he leads us. He does the little things that quarterbacks need to do nonetheless, even though he's a little different than, like you, you said, you, for you most know, quarterbacks. You know who should be looking at him? I'm, you, you look at what the Seahawks are trying to do. Sure, right. I, he played college football out there. They love him in Washington. I hear you. I hear you throw you. him onto that team with Pete Carroll and the way he is. I know. Man. Well, like you said, he's a guy that's not going to take over a game and do that. But if you give him a system and some players around him, he can make the ball go up and down the field. He's certainly capable of that. The, the, his biggest – you know, thing he'll have to overcome is he's not like to your point, not going to wow people. So they're always going to go, well, we could probably find somebody bigger and faster and with a stronger arm, right? And that'll be the thing he continues to battle through through his career until it gets to a point where it goes, hey, I don't know, all he does is win football games and make plays for us. Let's stop trying to replace him. By the way, that game featured a pair of block punts, and the second block punt it was so, was so decisive awesome. it wasn't even a block punt. <laughs> it was amazing because. The block happened before the punt. <laughs> right. That really was amazing. And that's the kind of thing that gets a special teams coordinator fired. Yeah. To have – this is the second one where the punt Hunter happens. Guy comes in off the edge. Tony yeah. Brown comes in off the edge and sneaks through there. Watch this. Here he comes and times it perfectly. From early in the yeah, year, on the, right? they did it on a field goal yes. or an extra point. But it uh, goes in, and uh, I feel bad for Ryan Stonehouse. He got injured. That left leg got, got messed up, and it forced Ryan Tannehill to hold for an extra point. But it cost them the game. That was missed. Right. That kept them from winning the game in right. regulation. Right. And we, we got an unexpected tutorial yesterday from Jason Garrett on how to hold because he held for Morton Anderson one That's year. Right. He was telling us all of the various little eccentricities and proclivities of Morton Anderson. You don't spin it. You turn, turn it, it. And, right. and he wants a nice fat ball. Don't white knuckle it. Hold it just right. Yeah. And lean it away from you, not towards you. Just right. all these little things that Morton Anderson wanted. And if there's a seam, you put it behind it. All the stuff that Morton Anderson wanted. But it, it is it is an art. It, I mean, Definitely. it looks, for the guys who know how to do it, it looks easy. Yeah, but it ain't but that easy. You, you tell a guy who hasn't done it in a right. while, go do it. 
it's it's not something that's going to be automatic. And we saw yesterday that, and he took the blame for it. Ryan Tannehill took the blame for a bad hold, and that caused the extra point to be missed, set the stage for overtime, and the Colts end up winning the game, and the Titans lose. All I, right, I think, give me well, one. I, I just want to hit up one more on that thing. The, the thing that's exciting about that game. The Colts have been running the ball on people and dominating. They couldn't run the ball against the Tennessee Titans team. You know, the Colts' defensive line have been playing really good here over the last month. They got absolutely annihilated by the Titans in the run game, right? You know, so uh, it was a different formula in which the Colts won. I think that's the exciting thing. And to your point with Gardner Minshew, they won it because of Gardner Minshew and his right arm and big throws to Michael Pittman Jr., big throws to Alec Pierce, and the special teams. The special teams, you know, scoring two touchdowns for them basically uh, helped them win the football game. Um, and, and that was a big part. Of, I think one of them, they held him to the field goal, right? But either way, that block punt gave him a field goal, that second one, and, of course, hurt the punter, which uh, affected the extra point there either way. But Colts, with Shane Steichen coaching, that offense is dangerous, and that was an awesome win for them on the, ro- uh, the road. Uh, my superlative, I'm going to go um, prayers answered, okay? Prayers answered. Yeah, you know, they, they, they needed to get back on a winning streak. They weren't doing good. So what do you do? You go to a Saint and you go, hey, can we win a football game? And, hey, the Saints are like, sure. Hey, they we got Derek Carr, quarterback. Here yeah. you go. Okay. Now, I mean, the, the Lions, there's some good and bad to be talking about with this game altogether. First off, they came out flying high and just bring it to the Saints. It was a game that started out, and you were like, man, the Lions are hidden, and they look like they're playing faster than the Saints, and they're young guys. Jameer Gibbs. Big carries in the football game, explosive as hell. Sam Laporta, you don't see rookie tight ends coming to the league and just tear the league up the way he's doing quite often. I mean, coming from Iowa, you know, he was NFL ready. You know, I think that's the big thing you saw, and he is a he's a big part of this offense. And then if they can get this guy going, because Jamison Williams is one of those guys that when we were watching the viewing game, viewing room yesterday, when he takes off, he has a Tyree kill effect. Rocking you up go, his ass. You, you go, everybody in our room went, whoa, right? Because he moves at a speed that very few people in football do. They got to get him the ball more, certainly. But big win for the Lions. Jump out 21 to nothing. You know, defense makes some plays. Give them the short field to go up 14 nothing there early on in the football game. But – Kind of lost momentum. The Saints started to pick them apart. Derek Carr, the run game got going. And then the fumble snap on the toss play by Derek Carr with the game being 27-21, you felt like, man, the Saints feel like they have the momentum here. Is Detroit going to be able to hang on? They get a short field. They score that the reverse to Jamison Williams and kind of put the Saints away by going up 33-21. Good win for the uh, Lions on the road. Things I'm concerned about, though, still with their football Defense. game. Defense. Defense is Playing concerning. with their food, too. Playing with their food and their offense, as you saw yesterday, because we kind of talked about this last week. The Saints play man-to-man, and once they kind of got a feel for how they were being attacked, we saw Jared Goff in the pass game all of a sudden go, wait, we, I can't find people open. I, we're not separating the same way. It's something I am a little concerned with with the Lions down the stretch. Well, hey, Goff had those six turnovers in two games, and that's something. I think there's That's why ceiling. they got back to the run this yesterday. There's a ceiling on the Lions exactly. that, that oh. is going to come into play yeah, I hear you. in the postseason. I hear you. I they're they're you. going to go to Dallas or Philadelphia or San Francisco, and they're going to find out how far they have to go to become an elite team. Yeah. And the quarterback position is the thing that they're going to have to address. And yeah. I know, I'm sorry, Lions fans, but if you want to win a Super Bowl, you're going to have to upgrade. That's what the Rams did. They moved on from Jared Goff, and they got Matthew Stafford, your old quarterback, and that was the upgrade they needed to win a Super Bowl. And the Lions, you know, they're, they're so desperate to contend, and they've been desperate to contend. They're about to win the division for the first time in 30 years. Best record they've had in 60 years. But... It's one thing to be in the conversation. It's another thing to dominate the conversation, and that's where they, they've just they've got some things they got to work on to get to where they want to be. And it may not be this year, maybe next year. Okay, uh, oh mama, I'm in fear for my playoff life. The Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> uh oh, that may have been a disqualifying loss yesterday. Whoa, I, there was a time, 2016, the Vikings started five and zero, and I do a thing every. Tuesday or Wednesday with Paul Allen, who's the play-by-play guy sure. for the Vikings, and it's always glass half full. I'm always doom and gloom. You might be shocked. By no, that. you. But Doctor they, Doom. They lost after going five and zero. They lost to the Eagles, and then they lost a Monday night game to the Bears, who were horrible that year. Yeah. And I said, Paul, Paul, this is a disqualifying loss. If you can't win that game, right, you're not getting to the playoffs. And they finished eight and eight, and they right. didn't get to the playoffs. Right. I see that game yesterday, the Steelers losing at home as badly as they did. And, you know, the key to the Steelers is get up two scores and they're yeah, done. Sure. You get up two scores and they're done. Right. 
And yes, they lost Kenny Pickett. He's gone two to four weeks. So who do you turn to? Mitch Trubisky, Mason Rudolph, Ben Roethlisberger, Terry Bradshaw. I, I just feel like that yesterday when we get back to the end of the road and examine who got in and who didn't, this is what we're going to look at and say, that's why the Steelers didn't make it. I, big moment here. Big moment in the season. You're, you're right about that, right? It felt like this is a perfect game for the Steelers. I mean, the Cardinals, they're not an offensive juggernaut. It just fits perfect. They'll win 17-14 or 17-13. They go for it fourth and goal from the one. The play they after figured. Pickett got hurt. And 99-yard drive by the Cardinals. That, to that me was the moment was the, the season shocker. went sideways. Agreed. Agreed. It, that was the shocker. Right, and then you had this to start the third quarter, or you know, a little bit into the third quarter. Fumbled snap, bad snap on the shotgun. It wasn't Mitch Trubisky's fault. Cardinals get it; they get the short field, and you know they struggled getting the end zone, but they finally got in there and two went up rain to delays, two scores. Two weather delays. Well, that's two lightning where, delays, Captain Planet. That's where I know. Where, right, you heard me during oh, the viewing room. I mean, no. it's December, <laughs> and there's. Lightning in Pittsburgh. Oh, no. Okay. Oh no. All right, everybody. Oh, the, sorry, uh, London. Got a little problem. Sorry, right? everyone. Little bit of an issue with the sorry. Earth's atmosphere. Sorry, sorry, okay? Jupiter. When these, I mean, when these uh, radio waves. Hey, make we're going way to Pittsburgh in December. It's going to be freezing <laughs> cold and tough to play it's it. Lightning. Oh, actually, it's going to be tropical and it's going to be a Caribbean rainstorm here. I mean, it's crazy. But either way, that's the one thing I'll just go a little wiggle room for your Steelers team, is that. The weather delays hurt the Steelers' formula. That's the only thing I'll say. You know, they, they you always talk about it. They whoop the crap out of you. They they out hit you. It's the late third quarter, fourth quarter of oh man, can we keep going at this physical way with the Steelers like this? And they kind of just out hit you, out punch you, whatever, and wear you down. I think because of the two long breaks, basically three different half times in the football game. That played in the Cardinals' favor to not get worn down in it by the physicality of the All Steelers. All right, so they're 7-5 and five right now. Yeah. Thursday night, they host the Patriots. Sorry, Bezos. Sorry. <laughs> they tried to give you a good schedule. This week, not so good. Patriots and Steelers. Then they're at the Colts on a Saturday afternoon. All of a sudden, that's a huge, a huge, huge game uh, for both teams. Bengals at the Seahawks and at the Ravens to finish the year. I don't think they're getting in. I, I don't think my favorite team is getting in. <laughs> yeah, they're your favorite team right that's now. That's what you said. <laughs> yeah, but I know. They're, they're your favorite AFC team, that's for sure. I, it, it's going to be tough. It, it is. It's, it's hard to look at them and go, can they do this? Can they weather the storm without Kenny Pickett? We'll see. Uh, I know we got to go to a break. I had one more superlative. We'll get to, we'll get to we'll it. We'll hit it to we'll it later. To, yeah, okay, we'll get to good. it later. We got good. time allocated. We. Courtney has learned that on Mondays with us, you just kind of save you gotta, a block you gotta go with for the all flow. the stuff we can't get to because no, we talk too much. That's why she's the best. She knows, yeah. All right, let's take and a break. Shut this guy up over here. Uh, the, the Rams. The Rams. They'd be the other team other than the Texans. We'd go, the they're not Rams, going to the playoffs. That, they were the team in the NFC. Right. like, eh, no they're for the Rams. Going. Yes for the Rams. More PFT Live right after this. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.